What have police told you that they think happened that morning? I don't know. They did um, start to tell us something. I said, I, I don't want to know. I couldn't, couldn't manage to take it in. She's my little girl, I know she's grown up, but she's still my little girl, and somebody's done, th done something to her. I just can't, I, I can't accept the details yet. I'm not ready. It's a serious crime homicide. This is where the investigation of Lisa Governor's being managed. Well, Lisa Governor and I are actually born on the same day. Different years, but um, we share the same birthday. Detective Sergeant Shane Russell was a young cop at the time Lisa disappeared. He's now the lead investigator on her cold case murder. Back in 1999, I was a uniform officer in Norseman, which is approximately 200 kilometres from Kalgoorlie. Being in the district and only a short distance away, an investigation or an incident such as this obviously gets your attention. The search for Lisa intensifying last night, police swooping on the local headquarters of the Club Darrow's bikey gang. For more than two decades, there's been rumour and innuendo about what happened to Lisa Govan. In this room, we've created a timeline of her last few hours who she was with, where she went, where she was drinking, even down to what she was wearing. We did this after obtaining incredible access to secret police files, looking at her diaries, her bank accounts and letters, and reviewing CCTV footage that up till now we never knew existed. We've never seen this before. Granny nightclub security vision was aired by news outlets in the days following Lisa's disappearance. But police didn't release all of it. Now, the young lady you can see here standing in black opposite the breathalyzer machine, that's Lisa Govan. We've got patrons now walking down the stairs. Um, I said the, the drinks have been cut off, uh, the establishment is now closing. And you can see a group milling around the front of the entrance to the establishment. Here in the black skirt is Lisa Govan. As you can see, mingling and interacting with patrons outside the club. We just saw a different camera angle kick in. Yes, the other camera angle is the side angle of the laneway adjacent to the Safari nightclub. For the very first time, we're going to show you what happens in that laneway and who Lisa was with. Why are we seeing it for the first time 20 years later? As this is an active homicide investigation, we need to be very strategic on how we release information. But it's the nightclub video that police now hope holds the key to this mystery. It's really normal for a lot of people to be out very late at night and early into the morning drinking. You know, that's perhaps part of the charm of the place was that it was very social. Detectives are retracing her steps from a night out on the town with friends at Safari nightclub. Somebody thinks they've got away with murder. It's not only police retracing Lisa's last night. The Govan family are understandably desperate for answers. They've enlisted the help of a private investigator and a medium. So the information I'm providing you has come from contemporaneous news articles and obviously interviews I've conducted with people who've come forward with information of what happened that night. For the past three years, private investigator Amanda Neller has chased every lead even those that led down rabbit holes. In the interests of due diligence, we followed up what the psychic had brought to the table. And I know that it was very distressing for Pat and Ian, because essentially we were looking for Lisa's remains. But I suppose for the governs, it closed off a chapter of seeking information from other sources. We're gonna put our faith back into people who collect facts and back into the police. We've timelined Lisa very thoroughly from the morning she woke until her last sighting. Part of that victimology investigation encompasses all her movements, um, all her contacts during that time. Lisa Govan spent the early parts of the evening getting ready at her home in Cassidy Street, Kalgoorlie. She'd just dropped her boyfriend Tim off for a 12 hour shift at his work and Lisa was primed for a big night out drinking in Kalgoorlie. She'd put her makeup on and she'd had a quick conversation with her mum before heading out the door. 
Lisa's partner, Tim, actually drove a Harley and worked out at the super pit in Kalgoorlie. He was on a night shift, but because it was raining, uh, it was a good idea for Lisa to drop him off in the ute. And the weather was very bad, that's why um, she took him in the ute rather than him go on his motorbike. Apparently she phone called her mum, had a bit of a chat about a recipe, about making a stew or something along those lines, a normal mother-daughter conversation. Well, it was just general chit-chat really, so she was going out and, you know, going to have a good go into the pub and everything, so I said, well, enjoy yourself, you know, as you do. And just general things like that. Did she mention who she was going out with in that phone call? Just some friends, some friends from work. I understand that she actually went to the Exchange Hotel where she bumped into a work colleague. They had a beer together. The next time he saw Lisa was at the Safari nightclub. At the time, that man became a focus of police. Police have identified most of the people in this video, but not this man seen talking to Lisa Govan in the nightclub. And he's often referred to as the bald man who was seen in CCTV footage with Lisa that evening and also leaving the safari club at 4.45 a.m. The bald man actually told me that while they were at the safari club, a very pretty blonde lady was there talking with Lisa. Apparently it was Lisa's friend. So when they got in the taxi, Lisa, after three minutes or a minute of driving, said they had to turn the cab around, would turn to the safari club because she wanted to say goodbye to her friend. Do you know who the attractive looking blonde woman who was at the safari nightclub on CTV was? And have you spoken to her? Yes, I do, and yes, she has been spoken to her the vehicle returned, he dropped her outside the front of the safari where her blonde friend was still waiting. Have you spoken to that cab driver? Yes, we have. The bald guy contacted her multiple times in the morning because he was of the view that she was actually going to return to his house once she'd finished at the safari and said goodbye to her friend. Well, I didn't know anything about him until recently. We had a phone call with him. He explained that um, they knew each other. Lisa maybe liked him a little bit more than just a friendship. Um, and that's as much as we know. A man seen talking to Lisa Govan at a Kalgoorlie nightclub has come forward to police person was interviewed last night and is not suspected of anything to do with the disappearance of Lisa Gavin. Police still want to talk to other people seen on this security video. She ended up at the Club Darrow bikey gang house. Were you surprised when you heard that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because I didn't know that she associated with any bikies at all. Police say Lisa Govan was at the clubhouse a few hours after leaving the nightclub. I've spoken to two people who were actually in the bikey headquarters that early morning. You could only go to this clubhouse as an invited guest. Um, when they attended, Lisa was already in the clubhouse and was playing pool or billiards uh, with a number of other people there. Well, you've got to remember Kalgoorlie in the 1990s. Wild town, quintessentially outback Australia rough, tough. To have a beer standing next to a gypsy joker in, a, in the pub was no big deal. Would be in a wine bar in the city, but not out there. Would you say the inside of a bikey clubhouse for someone that's not a bikey is a dangerous place? Well, depends on what you're chasing. From what I understand, they're decked out pretty well. They have pretty good pool tables, they've got great bars. They're not short of bending up. Boulder Road is one of the main streets in Kalgoorlie and the Foundry Hotel, its most famous pub. It is also the unofficial headquarters for the Kalgoorlie chapter of the Club Darrow's Bikey Gang. Next door to the Foundry is the Darrow's Clubhouse, where police say Lisa was last seen on the morning of October 8, 1999 at 7.45. Police say they've received fresh information on where Lisa Govan went after she was seen standing outside a bikey clubhouse in Kalgoorlie. For now, they say the information is operational and they're keeping it secret. This is where we then have a divergence of hypotheses and scenarios. So we know that police believe that Lisa re-entered the compound, but interestingly, we identified another witness uh, by the name of Robin Wade. Detectives are hoping this mobile police facility set up on Boulder Road will prompt community members to come forward with information regarding Lisa Govan's whereabouts. I went down quite quickly thinking this was, well, feeling it was very important 
and that something may have happened to that girl. From the moment I made that statement to the police, I was a marked man. There's no doubt that it was an aimed shot. If I'd had a better marksman, I could have died. <laughs>